Today on Florida Sportsman Best Boat, we'll be testing the abilities of a flats boat capable of getting shallow and beating down a bay chop, the Black Tip 18 Flats. This 18 footer was conceived out of the desire to provide the solid, comfortable ride of a larger bay style boat and all of their positive attributes, while also featuring the shallow water capabilities of a traditional polling skiff. For those who desire a versatile fishing boat that shines in style and affordability, we'll be looking at the Seaborn FX22 Bay LT with optional tournament deck. A 102 inch beam makes this a big 22 foot bay boat and a 13 inch draft means you'll be able to fish in skinny water. And for a family and friends that like to enjoy time on the water, no matter the activity, we'll be taking a look at the Release 295 Sport. Everything felt oversized today. The seating, the console, the helm, and yet there was still so much room on this boat. All coming up on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. What's the best boat for you? Whether you desire precision while pulling across the shallowest of flats, the ability to roam a variety of destinations from inshore to offshore, no boundaries while in vast expanses of open ocean, or you just want to create lasting memories with friends and family on the water. Join Florida Sportsman's trusted boating experts as they review the latest from today's most popular boating manufacturers to help you decide which is the best boat for you. Welcome to another episode of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. We have a nice surprise this week, you guys, a new boat for Best Boat. It's from Black Tip. They brought us their 18-foot flats boat, and I'm really looking forward to seeing this. Guys, we're also going to be looking at a bay boat from Seaborn, their FX22. Now, this is the fourth of the FX series boats that I've been on in my four years at Best Boat, and the last in the series that I haven't run yet, and I'm really looking forward to showing you this one. Hey guys, there's another new model we get to look at today from Release, their 295 Sport. I've already seen this boat. This boat's a lesson to me. I can't wait to show it to you. Okay, we got a work cut out for us. Let's get rolling. When we return, our hosts take a look at a flats boat that can handle more than just skinny water, the Black Tip 18 Flats. But first, let's join FS host Rick Riles and Rye Landry of Yamaha Marine as they discuss Yamaha's Helm Master Drift Point System in this week's seminar series. I'm here again with my teacher for our annual tune-up, Rye Landry. <laughs> Technology moving so fast, you got to reteach me all the time. And what you're telling me is whether I want to drift this shoreline fishing for speckled trout or I want to drift a ledge offshore, even if it has a bend in it, you can set the drift point to where it'll follow your waypoints. That's right. So with Hellmaster EX now, this is an all new feature that wasn't previously available. And you can almost think of it as autopilot while drifting. So traditionally drift point keeps our heading and then allows the boat to naturally drift with the current or the wind. What we can now do is we can go into our MFD and actually set up a route along our drift and the boat will then use low power fore and aft to pull us to those waypoints as we drift down. So we can now actually do a curve while drifting and naturally presenting our bait off to whatever we're fishing for. Gee, fish don't have a chance. Not, not anymore. They're gonna sue us. <laughs> this segment brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. An entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful, and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system. The all new Yamaha V8 XTO Offshore. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts as they step aboard the Black Tip 18 Flats, a flats boat designed to comfortably navigate shallow water and tackle rough water with ease. The Black Tip 18 Flats has an overall length of 18 feet, a beam of 7 feet 2 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 175. Built for handling choppy conditions and floating shallow, she has a draft of 8 inches, a dead rise of 12 degrees, a weight of 1,500 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 47 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts. 
George, today we are on a new boat for us. It's from Black Tip Boat Works. They brought us their 18 foot flats boat. Now, flats boat. Normally in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, 14, 16 feet. This is 18. So I'm actually really curious to see how this is gonna pull through the flats today. Yeah, you know what? The guys at Black Tip told me that when they designed this boat and built this boat, they're building it for people that want a flats boat Poland type of skiff, but also something that's more stable and that'll fit a few more people and it's going to be more comfortable to be on. That's a lot to ask out of a boat, but I think this boat's up to the challenge. What do you say we go do a little fishing? Newly formed Black Tip Boat Works debuts their first offering for 2021 with the all new Black Tip 18 Flats model. This 18 footer was conceived out of the desire to provide the solid, comfortable ride of a larger bay style boat and all of their positive attributes while also featuring the shallow water capabilities of a traditional polling skiff. The balance between the two styles of boat has to be carefully considered in order to execute this combination effectively. When choosing design aspects for ride performance and shallow draft to work together, the bottom design and dead rise have to be balanced properly. The Black Tip 18 sports a 12 degree dead rise bottom which provides enough angle to lay a confused bay chop or large boat weight down comfortably. The dead rise transition from the entry to the transom still flattens out enough for this boat to be pulled with ease in single digit depths. The Black Tip 18 in trying to split the difference between stability and comfort while still offering the flat skiff experience does a remarkable job of pulling the mixture off. On the pole, we were able to get quietly into real bonefish depths and rather effortlessly for a 1500 pound boat. Where the boat really shined, in my opinion, was running in some very choppy waters with a crazy confusing boatway crossing at every angle. In this regard, the boat really performed like a much larger boat. For this boat and on this day, I was pleasantly surprised to discover that this model hit the oncoming traffic softly and felt as solidly constructed as you could ever hope for. The ride alone on the Black Tip 18 flats was enough to impress me, but she hit the marks across the board for fishability as well. For fishability features in line with the traditional polling skiff, this model comes with a polling tower, a roomy forward and aft casting deck, perfect for sight fishing, and extra wide gunnels for easy walking. Additional dry storage is available aft beneath a pair of outboard corner located long compartments that lift rearward to allow easy access while the boat's on the trailer. At the center deck aft is a 30 gallon live well as well as a separate compartment to access your build. At the helm, you'll find a console face large enough to accommodate an oversized 16-inch Simrad unit that is still remarkably easy to see across while running. There was a large center storage compartment that was so large that we actually had two buckets in there in all of our bags. Most boats have rod storage, but it's usually for your conventional rods and reels. So it was really cool to see the rod storage today in the Black Tip. It was actually built for fly rods. This was really cool. The transom deck offered plenty of room for fishing, a live well, and if you want tackle storage, you got it. The four console seat is a frigid, rigid cooler that actually comes standard with the boat. These are fantastic coolers, and I think it was such a great incentive to add to the boat for the buyer. For sight fishing while being pulled across gin clear waters or running the inlets and passes to cruising the beach looking for migratory tarpon or cobia, this model definitely has the right combination of elements to accomplish all of the above. Okay, George, this morning I said what I was most curious about is pulling this skiff across flat water. It's 18 feet, but it has that bigger feel to it and I was really impressed with everything she did on the water today. And it just reminded me that you've got a skiff, flat, and a hint of a little bay boat in there because she's so sturdy. Yeah, the boat is absolutely as advertised, Lori. And I was impressed with how shallow we got the boat. I mean, we were in true bonefish depth. I'm gonna say for Black Tip Boat Works to try and build a boat that does so many things, and this is their first entry into the market, they definitely hit the mark with this 18 flats. When we return, our hosts examine a stable fishing platform that delivers a very comfortable ride, the Seaborne FX22 Bay LT with optional tournament deck. This segment brought to you by Fishing Nosara, the best sport fishing in Costa Rica. Fishing Nosara, Costa Rica's best sport fishing. Fight the world's baddest fish with top quality boats, professional tackle, and family friendly English speaking captains. Stay in the authentic nature preserve with wildlife at your doorstep. 
world-class surfing, nature tours, yoga, and fine dining are all at your fingertips in Nosara. Packages start at $700 per person. Don't delay. Book today. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts as they step aboard the Seaborn FX22 Bay LT with optional tournament deck, a bay boat that offers loads of style without sacrificing economy and versatility. The Seaborn FX22 Bay LT with optional tournament deck has an overall length of 21 feet 9 inches, a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 250. Designed for inshore and offshore conditions, she has a draft of 13 inches, a dead rise of 17 degrees, a dry weight of 2,000 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 50 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts. George Rick, if you notice in South Florida, bay boats are extremely popular. I own a bay boat, and I feel like that's because they're easy to trailer, they're affordable for the most part, and it's a good starting boat for the guy who's maybe thinking about going bigger. And today we're on the Seaborn FX22. Yeah, Lori, you're right. And the, the whole theme behind bay boats, the reason they exist, get the maximum amount of usage out of the minimum amount of commitment. And this boat certainly fills the bill. Well, we couldn't have a better day to test out a bay boat, guys. I mean, it's blowing 25 to 30 miles an hour, and this kind of boat is a day saver on a day like this. What do you say we go do a little fishing? The FX series of bay boats from Seaborn represent a real value priced option for somebody in the market for a new boat. Each FX bay comes with all of the quality features this style of boat has to offer, but won't cost any more than your typical name brand flat skiff. A perfect day weather-wise for testing a bay boat greeted us and 20 to 25 mile an hour winds immediately gave us a chance to see how she rides. The double step Paul really liked to ride up above the chop. Once we found the comfortable cruising speed and trimmed the engine out a little, she got up on the rear step and smoothed out beautifully. She got us into the shelter side of a mangrove shoreline to start fishing without incident, and we set out to do a little fishing. The 13-inch draft let us get into the shallower, sheltered areas of the intracoastal waterway without any problem, and we were able to stick the power pole quietly and work some creek runouts as though we were in a flat skiff. The difference being there was four of us fishing at the same time. The console was arranged for two behind the helm, with each having independently adjustable seats, which was extremely comfortable. A pair of MFD screens on the helm face was a nice touch, and you don't typically see that on a bay boat of this size. For anglers who like to stick the pole anchor on a flat and step out of the boat to wade fish, an integrated fiberglass platform on the port side transom corner offers an easy step into the shallows and features a fold-out stainless boarding ladder for swimmers in deeper water. Her gunnels are just the right height to keep the water in a choppy bay out of the boat and keep you comfortable. All the while still being low enough to make sneaking around inshore on a trolling motor a breeze. She's got a massive front casting deck with the bonus of a performance molded in cooler that will keep ice for days as well as serving as a great step up for us old guys to access that elevated platform. A 102 inch beam makes this a big 22 foot bay boat and a 13 inch draft means you'll be able to fish in skinny water. A pair of 32 gallon recirculating live wells mean that that limit of redfish you're waiting to weigh in will be alive and kicking when you hit the weigh in dock. Now this was really cool. You can actually open up the console to get to your electronics by removing the whole front piece. It's right in front of the helm seat. Whenever I have to work on my boat, I usually have to grab one of my kids because they are a lot smaller than me and they can reach their hands in those tiny little spaces. Well, with this opening, I can actually get in there and all my kids would have to do now is sit there and hold the flashlight. Now, a feature that I have never seen before are these removable rod racks. This was really cool. Not every day is a fishing day, so being able to remove these racks gives you more storage room. We had a Ford live well seat in front of the console. We actually did not use the live well today, but I did use it as a seat and it was extremely comfortable. A newly designed cockpit moved the seating from the outboard corners on the previous models inside to the center of the transom casting deck. This design change relocates your passengers out of the way of any spray that might make it into the boat during a windy bay crossing. Beneath the seat is wide access to your build systems. 
The seat also folds out of the way, easily turning the rear deck into a casting space large enough for a pair of anglers to work around each other. The new deck style also makes it possible to add a pair of live wells to opposite corners of the transom to make a total of three separate wells for multiple storage options. Guys, today proved why bay boats are so popular. We were not getting out that inlet, but it did not stop us from what we wanted to do today. We had rain, we had horrible wind, but we still got to fish and we had areas that we could go hide in. You're right, Lori, and this FX22 did everything we asked of it today, and my streak of running these FX boats from Seaborn remains intact. What a boat. It has been a great boat for us. And how much rougher weather do we want to fish in any boat today? We don't. Our mission was to get a day's fishing in. We did it. We had a blast doing it. I'm a fan of the FX-22. And I got to tell you, Seaborn mills it better every year. When we come back, our hosts step aboard a spacious family boat built for blue water activities, the Release 295 Sport. This segment brought to you by Bennett. Benefits you can feel, reliability you can trust. 50 years ago, Bennett Marine changed boating forever, inventing the trim tab, helping boaters get on plane faster, reduce bow rise, correct listing, improve efficiency, and increase performance. Over 1 million systems later, worldwide, we offer durable and dependable trim tabs and hatch lifters for all boat sizes, your only source for both hydraulic and electric systems. Industry-leading innovation, plus the best warranty and service available. Get Bennett on board and enjoy the ride. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts as they check out the Release 295 Sport, a spacious center console geared for family fun, comfort, and recreation on the water. The Release 295 Sport has an overall length of 29 feet 5 inches, a beam of 10 feet 1 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 600. Designed for cruising comfortably beyond the side of land, she has a draft of 20 inches, a dead rise of 21 degrees, a dry weight of 7,800 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 180 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts. Guys, today we're on the Release 295 Sport. Now this is the family edition. And I was gonna bring my kids today and I said, well, no, because there's six of us on the boat and I thought it was gonna be tight. Um, man, was I wrong. Lori, you make a great point and I'm starting to think the most useless statistic about a boat is how big it is. Now let me explain what I mean by that. We've been on 29 footers so we could put inside this boat and carry it around as our pet. Guys, you're both 100% on track here. And you know what Release is trying to do with this model is this is a boat that clearly it looks like a fishing boat when you look at it from the outside, but they really are targeting people that want to be able to go out and be comfortable, take the whole family or a big group of people and go for a ride and not feel crowded. Of course, you can go fishing if you want to, but what a great recreational boat. I mean, the seating and the size of the inside of this boat. What do you say we take it for a ride and put six people on it and see how she does? When Release said they were bringing their 295 Sport, I imagined the boat would be all about fishing. The outer appearance was definitely sporty, but the inside was comfort for the family, and the fishing features blended so well with the family features that it made this boat fun for everyone. At 29 and a half feet long by 10 feet wide, the 295 Sport is roomy and exceptionally stable. Powered with a pair of 300 Yamahas, as our test model was, the 295 jumped up on plane instantly and settled into a comfortable 30 mile an hour cruising speed at 3400 RPM. Top speed would surpass 50 miles an hour if I pushed it there. The 21 degree dead rise offered a soft head sea ride despite her considerable beam. For someone looking for a comfortable riding model, you certainly wouldn't be disappointed here. The bow seating was wide and comfortable, along with storage that was extremely easy to access. Perfect for your hands to slide under and pull up on the latch. At the forward console seat, a high back double wide lounge seat faces the group seated forward, making a comfortable setting for over six adults to enjoy drinks and conversation. Beneath the forward seat, there's a pair of dry storage compartments for gear and another larger compartment is located below the center deck forward. Not only is she big, but Release really obsessed about how they maximize the use of all that room inside by doing some really smart things. Things like building the console right into the liner of the boat. Then they anchored the T-top to the console in such a way that there's no pipes to bump a knee on 
or a deck plate to stub your toe on. The helm seating features a pair of convertible LeBrock seats facing a curvy blacked out dash display with room for two MFD units and all instrumentation. A sporty curved glass windscreen wraps the forward edge of the helm. For trim and finish work, the 295 Sport offers a luxury appearance all around the deck with plush upholstery and quality hardware. The console interior offers plenty of room for a porcelain flush head and shower sink along with space for changing for the girls. Storage for extra gear is easily handled within the space as well. The helm station rigging surface opens to reveal a cockpit sink and live well. A pair of long in-deck fish boxes flank the console to port and starboard and access to build systems is available through another large hatch in the cockpit deck. Everything felt oversized today. The seating, the console, the helm, and yet there was still so much room on this boat. I turned this area into something that Release <laughs> did not even know that they had. I took the bait prep area, turned it into a lunch prep station, and then we went offshore fishing and I found myself using this area as an aft seat. There is so much attention to detail by the way everything was organized in the transom. You have a hideaway bench seat that when up, it's great because it turns into combing bolsters when fishing. And when down, you have more seating room for family and friends. And then my favorite, the cooler in the deck. I love this idea, especially if you're like me, I can picture myself getting back on the boat after diving and hitting that cooler for a cold one. With a target buyer in mind that wants to take social activities to the water and have the flexibility of bringing everyone along for some cruising and water sports, combined with fishing or diving related action mixed in, the 295 Sport should fill a spot in the roster for release boats nicely and definitely bears a look. Guys, this morning said, you know, I wanted to bring the kids, but we already had six people. There was plenty of room on this boat, and I was just in awe with all the room that we still had. Release is really targeting a market that's going to involve a lot of family activities and a lot of recreation. But even though we didn't get to fish the boat today too much, this boat is absolutely set up to fish as much as it is to do recreational stuff. I mean, it's really set up to do a lot of things. Versatility and user friendly, okay? Versatile to do so many things. It's a great fishing machine, but it's set up for whatever else you want to do too. And no matter what you want to do, there was something user friendly about it. Just think about setting the anchor from up here on the pad and think about how much room you got past in the console. Let me tell you, the Release 295 Sport fills an awful lot of needs of anybody looking for a roomy 29-foot boat. Those were three great boats and each with a unique purpose today. You're right, Lori. Hey, if you want any more information about those three boats or any boat you see on Best Boat, visit us at floridasportsman.com. Or we'll see you next week on another episode of Florida Sportsman Best Boat.